Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, The Lineup. Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment, we will take you by transcription behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. Yes, for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, it's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, delicious flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, helps keep your throat moist, and gives you a nice little lift. The good, smooth chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert, adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. So for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. I was on a 24 that worked into a 48. I don't think I've had six hours sleep since Wednesday. The Bulati steak, huh? Yeah. And this weather. Oh, it's sure hot. Yeah. You have some witnesses? No. Just looking around. Dull upstairs. I'm glad we can use a lull. May I have your attention, please? I'll see you later. Yeah. You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call up a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Okay, bring on the line. All right, keep it moving. Right over here to the end of the stage. Now turn and face front, hands at your sides. Now, when I call out your number, step out and face the screen. Keep your head up so everyone can get a good look at you and talk up so everyone can hear you. Okay, number one, Leonard Strickland, robbery. Where do you live, Leonard? Uh, 77, uh, 65 Orangeville. What's your business? What do I do? Yeah, what do you do? What kind of work? Well, I'm not employed. I, uh, I used to be a carpenter. When was the last time you worked as a carpenter? The last time... Well, I guess that was about five, six years ago. Oh, yes, at least. What kind of jobs have you had since then? Oh, well, I've done lots of odd things. I was a window washer for a while. I worked at gas stations and labor gangs for the city. Oh, I've done a lot of things. Who were you with when you were picked up? Oh, a guy, Stanley Halloran. He was picked up, too. Is he in the line? Sure. Point him out. Him. First one. Number two, Stanley Halloran. You want I should step out? No. To call my number? Stay there. When? When what? Do I step out? I'll tell you. He was just pointing you out to the people out front, Stanley. Oh. You're next. Okay. I'll take care of it, Leonard. He ain't so bright. Oh, wait. You ain't. Okay, knock it off. I'm sorry. You just don't understand things. Who don't? You don't. Now, shut up. Just answer my questions. That's enough. Sorry. He talks to Shut up. All right. Now, when you were arrested, Leonard... Yeah? Did you have any weapons on you? Weapons? Guns, knives. You had the biggest shotgun you ever saw. Now, listen. I told you not to talk unless you were asked. Stupid. He's just plain stupid. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Leonard. Yes? Did I ask you how stupid he was? No. Then tell me about the shotgun. It was a shotgun, an old one. Double barrel? Pump? What? The pump. I bought it. What was the caliber? Uh, 16 gauge. Okay, Leonard, step back. Number two, Stanley Halloran, robbery. Well, come on, come on. 
Now? Yeah, step out. Get him off the stage. Take him down to the tank. Uh, okay. Now, where do you live, Stan? Alone. I said, where? Where do you live? Uh, I live down by Jefferson. You live down by Jefferson? Yeah, Jefferson, Big Long Street. What's the address? Uh, uh, 2365 East Wilton. Uh, it's up from Lincoln. I guess it's really not down so much. Kind of in between. This is turning out to be my lucky night. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Did you have any weapons on your stand? No, I wouldn't even carry the shotgun. Were you driving a car? No, I wouldn't drive it. I, I didn't even want to do the job much. I just... I didn't feel good. Was Leonard driving the car? Yeah, that's when he wanted me to hold the shotgun, but I told him, not on your life, and he had to put it in the back seat. What kind of a car was Leonard driving, Stan? I don't know. Was it a sedan, a coupe? Uh, it had a back seat. I suppose it was a sedan. What color was it? The back seat? The car. Uh, I don't know. All right, step back. Did I talk loud enough? Yeah, you did just fine. Now, step back. No, 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 the other end of the line. Did I get my same place? The other end, Stan. Okay. Uh, number three, Arthur Willoughby, robbery. Where do you live, Arthur? <coughs> 99 North, 109. <coughs> I got a cold. What do you do, Arthur? <coughs> I'm a painter. What kind of a painter? House painter. Where do you work? I'm not working now. I, I, tour, I work for Ajax. Yeah. Oh, Were you arrested you? with anybody? I see you? No, for I was sure. alone. Any weapons? No. You have a car. Yeah, a 37 Ford Coupe. <laughs> Pete really had himself a couple tonight. Yeah? How was that? Just got a call from Small over on Adams. Oh, what is it? Homicide. Officer around the beat found a dead man in an alley. Okay, let's go. Hi. It's down here. Come on, let us through, please. Let us through. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the officer on the beat, uh, Miller, is a new boy. Found him. Uh-huh. Hello, Doc. Uh, hello, Ben. Crockett and I have been over the alley. We couldn't find anything. How long has he been dead? Well, let's see. Uh, about an hour, not anymore. How'd he die? Beat to death. I'll tell you more as soon as I get him downtown. All right, boys, clean it up. <clears throat> Uh, got a cigarette? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, sure hope it cools off. Didn't sleep five minutes last night. Uh, thanks. All right. Uh, when do you want my report, Ben? Soon. Ten o'clock? Okay. Uh, see you. Good night, Doc. Uh, thanks for the cigarette. Sure. Any identification, Small? Well, there's a wallet. Here it is. That's all he had on him. The name's Farmer. Mm-hmm. Stanley Farmer. 79 East Weston. Hmm. It's not too far. Well, let's look around. <clears throat> I'd say the fight took place in this part of the alley. You see the big can? Uh-huh. Yeah, I caved in. Yeah, it looks like one of them fell over it. There's blood on the pavement near it. Mm. Hey, shine the light on the wall. Now, over to the right. What are these buildings on either side? A warehouse and the department store. In a fight like this, someone must have heard something. A warehouse or a department store would have a night watchman. Well, if you heard anything, you'd have taken a look, but well, we'll check anyway. Let's walk down the alley. Right. Uh, cover the wall on this side and this part of the alley with your lights, will you? How about the other end of the alley? Where does it lead? It's a dead end. Hmm. wonder what the other guy looked like. The dead one was really worked over. Well, might have been more than one guy working him over. Yeah, hold it a minute. They were even fighting here. More blood. Hmm. Scuff marks. Rubber heeled shoes. They're fresh marks. Well, biggest part of the struggle looks like it took place back there. <laughs> but shine it down here. Well, what's that? What? Why? Shine your light down there. Down there, Small. No, over by those cans. There. Oh. Feathers. Feathers? Yeah. Looks like part of a woman's hat or something. It's a pretty funny-looking hat. The cans are dumped over here. Oh, this might be something. A lot of junk in this alley. Well, we'll go through every bit of it. Any other time, it would be just junk. We'll check it all. Keep the alley blocked off. I'll call in and have them send some boys down to keep it clear until morning. Okay. 
Well, let's go, Dave. Uh, if you find anything, we'll be over at Farmer's house, and then back to the station. I'll call from Farmer's and give a phone number. All right. Pretty late. Maybe he doesn't live with anybody. Boy, it's hot. Bring it again. Now, wait a minute. There's a line. What's going on? Uh, we're police officers. Uh, all right if we come in? What do you want? Does Stanley Farmer live here? Yeah, he ain't home. We know he isn't. Uh, who are you? Frank Farmer, I'm his brother. Come on, what is it? What's wrong? Stan get into trouble or something? I'm sorry I can't tell you this any other way. Your brother's dead. Huh? I'm sorry. We'd like to talk to you about it. Maybe you can help us. If you don't feel like it now, we No, can... no. No, it's okay. I... I guess maybe I should break up or something, but I don't feel anything. I, I guess I should feel awful, but I don't. Well, maybe if you had a drink. I, I don't drink. Dan's dead? He was found in an alley. Look. Come on in the other room and sit down. I can't think too straight. Been asleep. Gosh, fellas, this is... You know, miserable. I... I'd... I'd just make yourselves comfortable. Gosh, I think to wake up to you. Sleeping your head off and stinking doorbell you. It's funny, I was dreaming of a bad one. The doorbell just jarred me and it rang a couple of times. We didn't know if your brother lived you, you with You know, I, I swear that this is the darndest thing. I, I, I got along with my brother great. I guess I loved him as much as anybody, loving the family. I just can't feel much. What a numb. We want to find out who killed him. Yeah. Do you have any enemies? No. No, if, if he did, I... I didn't know about any. He's a nice guy. Early, so I have to get in the sack early. You work? Yes. Stan and me would work together. We've got a service. I'm sorry, for it. It's gotten... Well, we can talk about it. No, no. Let's get it over with. I've got a job, and I'd like to help. Stan was a good kid. I'm older. That's the way I kind of always talked about him. He really isn't... A... <laughs> really isn't anything, is he, now? Look, Mr. No, Farmer, I... No, no, just... It took me a little while getting around to it. I, I haven't cried in a long time. I felt like I should. I... Go ahead. I'm okay. What time did Stan go out? Before I went to bed. Early. Around seven, maybe. He had a date. A date? Yeah, he's seeing a girl... Her name is, uh, uh June. Uh, June, uh, he told me. Do you know where she lives? Hmm? Uh, uh, no, I... He told me June. June Colton, Colton, uh, something like... Uh, Col uh, June Coleman, yeah. Uh, June uh, Coleman? Yeah, yeah, he's... We've been seeing her for about a week. I've never met her. And you don't know where she lives? No. no. Where we might be able to find her? He, he met her in a bar. It's Stillman's, I said. It's only about three blocks from here over on Madison. I don't know the address. Uh, we'll find it. You, th you think maybe she had something to do with it? Your brother say much about her? He liked her. Her name, he, he, he told me at once, maybe, maybe twice, and, and he liked her. That, that's all he told me. And you can't think of anyone who might have it in for your brother? No. Look, I, I'd, I'd tell you if I knew. I, I guess there was people who didn't like him or who likes everybody. But I, I, don't, I don't know anybody who'd, who'd want to kill him. Well, uh, we may want to talk some more. Sure. Yep. And we'll check on the girl. Sure. Uh, look, uh, I, I guess I ought to see him. He's um, pretty badly beaten up. Beat? Is it somebody? Yeah, yeah. You'll have to identify him sooner or later, but if you don't mind a suggestion, wait till tomorrow evening or, or tomorrow afternoon or late. Sure. Well, good night, Mr. Farmer. Thanks. Sure. Come on, Dave.
Think it'll ever cool off? I don't know. Whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint while you're working. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint gives you a refreshing little lift. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied. Makes your job seem easier. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum in your home, when you're out walking or driving, when you're enjoying outdoor sports and other activities. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good anytime. And the natural chewing aids digestion and helps keep your teeth bright and attractive. Yes, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Now, back to the lineup. talk to you. We're police officers. Okay. Watch for me, Sid. Be right back. We can talk in the kitchen. Well, that'll be fine. Okay. You know Stanley Farmer? Stanley Farmer? Yeah, I know. A regular customer? Pretty regular. Been coming in for about a year, I guess. Know his brother? Yeah. A girl named June Coleman? Jim Coleman? Yeah. Blonde? We don't know. Friend of Stan's. Good-looking blonde. Well, she's a friend of Stan's. He had a date with her tonight. Yeah, I know her. Real good-looking doll. Blonde, like I said. She came in with Stan tonight. You know where we can find her? No. Mind if I ask what this is all about? Stan's been killed. Stan? You say he was in here tonight with the girl? Yeah, that's right. What was she wearing? Huh? Do you remember what she had on? What kind of a dress, hat? I don't pay much attention to those things. Dane's dead? She was a pretty nice kid. That's too bad. How did it happen? That's what we're trying to find out. Uh, did the girl have on anything with feathers on it? Feathers? Yeah, like these. Oh. Hey, hey, yeah, she did. Funniest looking hat I ever seen. Feathers like that on top. What time does Stan come in with the girl? Hmm, came in about nine or so. Left around, well, I guess it was here for a half hour or so. About 9.30 it left, I guess. And you don't know where she lives? No. How long has she been coming in here? Oh, about five, six weeks. She come in alone? No. First time she came in, she came in with Charlie. Charlie? Charlie Phillips. Been a customer for a long time. Uh, was Charlie with her the night stand met her? No. She'd been coming in for two or three days without Charlie. I figured they had a fight or something. And where does Charlie live? I don't know for sure, but he's a fisherman. Commercial fisherman. Is out sometimes on the boat for two, three weeks at a time. When I saw the blonde come in alone, I figured Charlie was out with the boat. You have his own boat? No, I know for a fact he don't. He always talks about getting his own boat when he's in here lush to the eyeball. Always he's going to get his own boat someday and make a lot of money. I always tell him as long as I make booze, he ain't going to save enough to buy nothing. He just laughs and just keeps on getting more and more tank. He catches fish and he drinks like him. Who does he work for? A fellow named Cassidy. Nice old guy. Brogue and everything. I don't know what the name of his outfit is. Probably Cassidy something or other. He's proud of his name and he probably uses it every time he gets a chance. If his business is named anything, you'd better it's Cassidy something or other. Well, look, um, if Cassidy or Phillips or the blonde come in, I want you to call the 16th precinct. The 16th precinct? Yeah, ask for Guthrie and if I'm not there, ask for Quine. Guthrie or Quine. That's right. 16th precinct, Guthrie or Quine. I got it. Thanks for your help. Sure. Stop in again. Yeah, we'll probably do that. Sun comes out. If I could stop it, I would. 
What time has it been? Mm, it's close to five. Ah, Cassidy. You got a pretty big place. Mm, and a pretty big sign. Bartender knew what he was talking about. Hey! Yeah? Know where we can find Cassidy? You found him. What can I do for you? Uh, we're police officers, Mr. Cassidy. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Sergeant Asher. Oh, how are you? And we'd like to talk to you. Well, don't have too much time. Just going out. Yes, sir. Taking the Cassidy fleet out. You have a man working for you named Phillips? I have. Charlie Phillips. That's right. Yeah, but if he don't show up in the next five minutes, he ain't going to be. Uh, what do you want him for? Well, we just want to talk to him. Well, he ain't showing up yet. Should have been here about two hours ago. Uh, you know where he lives? Sure, sure. I got his address in the office. I'll get it for you, but then I got to get in the boat on the way, you know. Yeah. Come on over and I'll unlock. Oh, hold it, hold it. Here he comes. Uh, Phillips? Yeah. Well, come on, come on. Look at him. Been in a fight already. <laughs> where you been? You're two hours late. Okay, okay. I'm late. I'll make it up. You, you bet you will. Uh, these guys want to talk to you. Yeah? Police officer. Police? Probably about the fight you got into last night. Who says I got in a fight? Oh, oh, I suppose you got the shiner. I didn't get in no fight. Uh, we'd like to talk to you, Charlie. I gotta get on the boat. Have to wait. Well, I can't. If you're not down in ten minutes, we'll sail without you. All right, all right. Well, come on, come on, then. Let's get it over with. Yeah. I'll see you later. Uh, thanks, Mr. Cassidy. Oh, don't mention it. Okay. What is it? You know a man named Farmer? No. Stan Farmer? No, I said no. I never heard of him. How about June Coleman? Yeah. So what? I know her. How long have you known her? Look, you guys, if I don't get on that boat, I lose my job. I'm sorry, but we need some answers. You'll get on the boat as fast as you give them to us. Okay. I've known June for a couple of months, I guess. Where does she live? What's this all about? Where does she live? Over on River, 245 South River. Where were you last night? Look, I'm going to miss Did that... Did you see June last night? Yeah. Now, look, you guys, I'm getting a little tired of this. If I lose my job, you guys are going to be sorry. Where were you last night? I was out. Out where? Out with June. June Coleman? Yeah, I was out with her until real late. Then I went home, ask her. I will. What time did you get home? About three this morning. What time did you take her out? About seven. And you were with her all evening? Yeah. Hey, there go the boats. Come on, get out of my way. I'm going to lose my job. Come on, move it. Don't get rough, Charlie. Listen, you stupid flatfoot. You just no, make... Now relax Boy, yourself. You relax. relax. Hold it. Okay. You don't have to pull a gun. I won't give you no trouble. Let's go, Charlie. Okay. Where are we going? I think we'll go over and talk to your girl. My girl? Yes, June. The one you were out with last night. What do you want to talk to her for? Where did you get the black eye? I got in the beef. Last night? No, the night before. Tell us about it. Well, there ain't much to tell. Some guy got nasty and one thing led to another. You know how those things are. No, Charlie. Tell us how they are. We got in the beef, that's all. You come out on top, Charlie? Oh, I don't know. I hit him a couple of times. I guess who wins a fight? Hmm. That's why you guys want me? For getting in a fight? That's right. Well, it wasn't anything. The other guy was all right. Who was the other guy? I don't know, just some guy. You know how those things start. We were drinking, having a couple. Where you... were you drinking? Where? In a bar. What bar, Charlie? Well, I don't know. I was in a lot of bars. I don't remember which one I got in the fight. Well, maybe June will remember. I wasn't out with June. You said you were. I said I was out with her last night. I got in a fight the night before. Oh, yeah. You got to a bar last night? Yeah. Yeah, we went to a bar. Which one? Well, we went to a couple. Name them. Well... Stillman's. Over on Madison? Yeah. Get in, Charlie. We're going over to see June? That's right. She ain't gonna like being waked up this early. We'll apologize. It's down further, 309. Oh, she's gonna raise the roof. Oh, hold it, this is it. Look, knock on it, Dave. You guys are sure making a lot out of a lousy little fight. The fight we're interested in wasn't a lousy little fight. But I'm telling okay, you... Okay, to... okay, you told us. All right, relax, I'm coming. For Pete's sake, what... Charlie. These are cops. We can handle it, Charlie. Cops? Can we come in, please? I just got out of bed. I told him I was out you of You don't school. talk, Charlie. What is all this? Can we come in? Or do you want to come down to the station with us? Oh, I just got up. Come on in. 
Hey, what's going on? I tried to I told, told you to guy. knock it off, Charlie. If you wasn't a cop... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to know what's going on. Gee, you drag a girl out of bed. Charlie gotta... tells us you were with him until about four this morning. Yeah. That's right. I was. He picked you up about seven? Yeah. See? You know Stan Farmer? Stan Farmer? Yeah, I know him. Been out with him? Yeah. He was killed last night. He was? Oh, gosh, that's terrible. I didn't know him too good. He was killed? And you were in Stillman's bar with him last night. She was with me. Yeah, I was. You were in the bar from about 9 o'clock to 9.30 with Stan Farmer. Charlie. And you were wearing a hat with feathers on it. These feathers. I told you. And we found those feathers in the alley where we found Stan Farmer's dead body. I don't know anything about it. Where did Charlie get the black eye? I got it. You shut up. Look, you... Charlie, for Pete's sake, tell him. Shut up. No. No, tell him. I don't want to get in no trouble. Shut up. Keep your mouth shut. He killed him. He got us out together and he... dirty little... (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Thanks, Ben. The big boy. All right, Miss Coleman. Tell us about it. Well... He caught us out. I've been seeing Stan. He killed Stan? Yeah. He, he caught us and dragged Stan in the alley. Stan didn't even see it coming. I ran, and then he came here later and told me he'd kill him, and if I ever went out with another guy, I'd do the same to him. He had me scared out of my wits. If I'd known what he was like, I'd never have started to go with him. Honest, I, I didn't have nothing to do with it. Ask him. He'll tell you I ran, and I didn't have nothing to do with it. Come on. Charlie, wake up and tell him I didn't have nothing to do with it. Charlie. Uh, you better get into some clothes and come on down to the station. But I swear I didn't. Now we just want a statement. A statement? Charlie will be out for a while. Big ape. Stan was a nice boy. He treated me nice. Big ape. You better get something on. Okay. You made me ruin the best hat I got. Big ape. <laughs> Remember, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, freshens your taste, sweetens your breath. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied, makes whatever you're doing more enjoyable. Yes, for refreshment plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Millions enjoy it daily. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. The lineup starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie with Jack Moyle, the Sergeant Pete Carter, was written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were High Everback, Howard McNear, Hal March, Bob Sweeney, Peter Leeds, Dick Ryan, Jim Nusser, and Virginia Gregg. The lineup was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>